Valkyr, the original melee frame. Back in 2014, in the ages of yonder, our melee tools were a little more than a traversal method. We had stamina and big dreams, but little tools to accomplish such dreams. So in order to kill with melee, we played as Valkyr. She was the game's answer to melee being trash. Now it's weird, right? It's weird because... Uh, Melee is really good now, but she's kind of trash. It's like the other way around. So times have changed. She's a perfect example of a frame who was extremely good and now is middling, I would say. But I still love her. And today we're going to look at an end game. Umbral. Archon. Helminth. Valkyr. All the buzzwords thrown into one tiny Valkyr. So now, before we get into the build, we have Vazarin as a focus school, because Vazarin lets us get a shield. That's really it. <laughs> you can use Vazarin for the shield, or you can use Naramon for the uh, keep melee counter, which can be useful. Now, the Alternox and the Curse Gating Key Kakuithis. This is the Tenet Spyrex. I have videos on these two on my channel. The Venka Prime is solely for the combo count chance. Pretty bog standard Venka Prime, nothing fancy, it's not even super optimal. It's mostly just to get the combo counter high, that's really it. Um, now, we also are using the Naughty Dotty, the Natalis. I have a video about this on my channel as well with the Hellstrom. Now we can actually talk about Valkyr in this Valkyr video. So before we get into the Valkyr, let's talk about our Archon shards because they are imperative to this build. So right off the bat, we're using a Tau Forge shard crystal or whatever the hell it's called. So without this Tau Forge shard, we would either need to replace this HP regen shard or this cast speed shard with another power strength build shard thing. Otherwise it won't work. So Bit of a specified build here, min-maxed, if you will. So, we have two for ability strength, that's 35 right there, which gets us to a 100% for Theros Strike, the Helminth ability. That's why. <laughs> and then we're using HP Regen, which goes perfectly with her innate very high armor and health. And then we're using Effectiveness on H, uh, Energy Orbs and Cast Speed. Now, the Effectiveness on Energy Orbs doesn't really stack with Equilibrium. Like, say you pick up a Health Orb, that Archon Shard is not going to give you extra energy back from it. So it doesn't really work with this as well as one would think. Uh, but it is what it is. And now, before we get into like all the mods, let's just go over the arcanes. You could really slap on whatever you want. Right now, I'm using arcane primary charger because we're going to be getting melee kills very easily. And then arcane avenger because with arcane avenger, it will proc during her four. You will get the critical chance bonus even while you're invincible. Now. On top of that, our main method of survival, brief respite for our shield gating. If you're one of these people who's anti-shield gating, I'm not conversing with you. Get out of this place. It's not for you. I understand you may think that it feels cheap, but it is an intended mechanic, and it is the most effective tactic available. Now, the brief respite, the rolling guard, if you're unaware of why we're using rolling guard, then I would like to refer you to what I just said about brief respite. And then, in addition to these two survival mods, we're using primed sure-footed. If you're unsure of why we're using primed sure-footed, I would like to refer you to the explanation I gave you for Rolling Guard. And now, we're using Triple Archon, or Umbral Mods. Uh, I normally don't like running all three, but it is very beneficial to her very high armor and health. Additionally, say you run a pet, a companion, your companion will pretty much just never die with these Umbral builds, because uh, if it uses Link Shields and Link Health, your, your pet will actually have a lot of survivability, which is quite the surprise. I, was, I tried it as a meme and it worked great, but that's neither here nor there. Now we've primed continuity, kind of for convenience. Uh, these two perks here are mostly for my flex slots. Now, 
Prime continuity is kind of necessary, though, in the fact that it will give us more hysteria. And we do need more hysteria because we're using the augment. Increases our damage and critical chance of our four. So when we look at the blades, they're going to look a little different than it would without the augment. Because uh, it does actually apply to the mod screen when you're looking at your claws. So just bear that in mind. Now, it does make it so that we don't have... Uh, it's not a channeled ability anymore. It's a... Uh, activate it for 50 energy and then it lasts the duration so you see how it says 23 seconds say I only use two seconds then the cooldown is only two seconds so it's a major misconception is that you'd have to wait that 23 seconds you don't so this is fantastic for it it kills everything if you did not have the enraged augment in order for your blades to deal subsequent and significant damage you would have to have all of your Archon Shards pretty much just all be red melee crit. You would not be able to be afforded the convenience of this build. It, you would have to totally change your Shards in, in order for it to feel like a competent melee weapon. But we'll get into that. So uh, we're using Enrage for the critical damage and damage. And Eternal War is pretty much, as I said, a flex slot. It's mostly for the convenience. As I said, she has a bit of an energy problem, as do most frames. So by not having to cast... Uh, our, one of our abilities, like ever, it, it helps a lot. <laughs> it's very nice uh, for her energy economy to not have to deal with that. So that is the long and short of why we have the mods that we have and why we have the arcanes that we have. Um, now, the weapons I'm using simply because they're fun. My primary primes for my secondary and my melee primes for my primary because it has primary dexterity and then this buddy has Cascadia Flare, which I am getting stacks of from my primary. Again, I have videos on the Alternox, the Coruscating Kakoethes, and the Natty Daddy on my channel if you are so interested. But let's get into the claws. So, another Umbral Forma. This has three Umbral Forma on this build. So, uh, it's standard. Very standard. Prime Pressure Point, Prime Fury, Prime Reach, Sacrificial Steel. These two are for the corrosive typing, and then these two mods are for critical damage. Now, you may be asking yourself, a lot of people don't like using the range, um, just in general on melee. We are using it here because of follow-through. We have one follow-through, which means that everything past the first enemy we hit is also getting the same amount of damage. So the prime reach is imperative for this build, right? And on top of that, I would like to tell you that if you are building your claws for Viral Slash, you are not building her claws correctly. There are several different ways you can build her claws. Here is one build, a heavy attack build. Uh, is this one built up? This they don't, don't pay attention to this one. <laughs> this is my, uh, this is the discount, literally the cheap version of this. Um, but as I was saying, uh, you can build this several different ways, heavy attack, etc. But just know, if you're trying to build this for Viral Slash, you're not building her claws correctly. This is a horrible weapon for Viral Slash. With Viral Slash, your Viral is there to increase the damage of your Slash. By having a big Viral number, it will make the Slash bigger. But because you have equal amounts Puncture, equal amounts Impact, you have a greatly decreased chance of getting that Slash. Plus, it has low status chance. So this is a horrible Viral Slash weapon. And if you are running Viral Slash on this weapon and you're sharing that as a recommended build for someone asking for Valkyrie Claw builds, you are embarrassing yourself and the people who are in the know are scoffing at you and they're shaking their heads in disappointment and wondering if they should say something uh, or if they should just not in the risk that it may make them seem impolite for daring to call out someone's crummy build so that's the long and short of it right we have uh we need the 200 percent power strength for Theros strike because this perfectly replaces her three uh her prolonged paralysis i used for years but this is a straight up better version of it defense reduction armor stripping giving us health back it also allows us to do finisher uh attacks on enemies and it is pushing them back slow cc so that's everything. That is the build. Now, let us do a survival. 
Uh, through the power of the PS5, we're going to load into a Lua survival very quickly. I would like to note that this is single player. This is a solo. And I would also like to note that I don't pretty much ever play as solo. I like to play as groups. What drew me to Warframe way back in the day was combinations of frames. Putting together teams was the meta. P in, in chat, you would never so just see people... Uh, joining squads willy-nilly. It would be need Nova, need Nyx, need Loki, need Rhino, stuff like that. You you would always would always be wanting specific frames. That aspect of Warframe is pretty much gone for anything outside of farming, right? Now we don't ever rely on different types of frames, but despite that, that's what I loved most about Warframe was the combinations of frames. Not necessarily the abilities or their strength, but the combinations of frames. So I never play solo, so you will forgive me if my build may possibly seem um, not the best solo, uh, because I, I'm probably going to fail the mission, right? I probably won't keep the... Um, I'm going to leave early. I probably won't keep the uh, the air supply up enough. But part of it is I'm talking and explaining to it, and I'm trying to showcase it and all this other shit. <laughs> so forgive me if it doesn't seem perfect. But uh, yeah, I, I like to play as a group. I like to play with groups of frames. And normally I don't even get touched when I'm playing as a group. Uh, or at least my companion doesn't. But I, I, who knows, maybe I'll even die. But, this frame can level cap. But if you are to level cap, you're going to definitely have to rely a lot more on your operator to get this shield. It is crazy, crazy, crazy imperative uh, to use your operator uh, to keep uh, Valkyr cranking, basically. If you're wondering what's drawing the enemies to me closely, what's grouping them, that's my companion. It's the Naughty Dotty. Video on my channel about it. For a little bit. Now, I'd like to point out all the people said the Alter Nox can't kill Steel Path. I'm killing Steel Path. Killing Steel Path. So, it's, it's not like I'm trying to say she's the perfect frame with my build, right? I'm not implying that, uh, but I do think that this is a very powerful build. Oh my god, like why can't I use my gun? It's because it's on the floor. I hate these enemies. <laughs> so this build uh, is great in team play because every time the bad guys come, be it the uh, the stalker, be it a boss, be it an angel, be it anything, they are decimated. You one-shot everything. Absolutely everything. So that's pretty much this frame's function, is to just obliterate high-value targets. Obliterate high-value targets. You're going to be activating your 4 a lot as a no-shit button, and then you're going to be transversing out of it. Now my four is up, I'm gonna oh shit. I wanna kill this guy here. Priority targets, and then I'm out. So it is uh, an acquired flavor. Other, fl other frames do it easier, but nobody does it like Valkyrie. So I would like to pose to you too that um, you could probably make this even better. Maybe you have a better companion at the Panzer. Maybe you have better weapons. But part of it is this is my entire build that I like to use on this frame. I don't like to throw the Alternox on everyone because it doesn't work on everyone. Circular builds are the future of Warframes. Things that loop into each other. Your arcane loops into your weapon. Your weapon loops into your secondary. Loops into your melee. That is the future of Warframe. Right? Archon marks. That you have to do heal yourself to get them to power up. Like, looping into each other is a very important part of Warframe. Uh, something I call circular builds, which maybe I'll do a video on. And this is most certainly a circular build. Where it loops into itself. Um, so... Maybe you'll find uh, success with 
not the Alternox. <laughs> maybe you'll use the Brahma. <laughs> Or maybe you'll just use melee. But uh, this is a very competent and powerful build. This is a min-max build. It is not clickbait. Uh, this is taking me quite a while. I, I've, she's my third most played frame in the game. And this is the build I mainly use on her. And as I said too, normally you have other people with you. So normally you're not like the main focus for everything to shoot at. So this is a bit of a shock, culture shock to me to be playing uh, a <laughs> solo mission. But we're, we're going to head out of here in a bit. Um, now, keep in mind, this is not the most powerful frame in the game. But she is fantastic for whenever you need something high level killed fast. The slide attack is extremely powerful. Slide attack is her most useful tool. Slide attack is the damage. So you're pretty much just slide attack. It's slide attack the character. Ah, so that's that's really the long and short of it. We'll uh, let's get on our way in a second here. But it is a bit of an ability cycle. You will need to cast your four and your three uh, pretty significantly. But it's it's a, a bit of a game where you can't just dump your four. You can't stay in your four forever. Your four is a no shit button, um, and you can't waste it. Like I knew this guy was coming, so I was storing up for him. If he didn't die in one hit, that's odd. <laughs> You can build up combo with your melee before you use the uh, the four, but because we have the augment, that's not necessary. Otherwise, if you're doing just a duration-based Valkyrie, you'd probably need to do that, but not on mine. So uh, let's head on out of here uh, before I say anything a second time. I take great um, care in trying to keep things succinct and not run on too long, because you get the point, right? I trust that people looking at content like this are smart people. I don't think it's pleb new players who are looking at Umbral Archon, Helm, and uh, Valkyr builds, right? Like, this build won't be accessible to them for quite a while. But I would just like to say that Valkyr is a very solid frame, and this is one of my favorite builds in this game, just in general. And I think it has a, a very high scaling. It, I have done level cap with this, but uh, these days I really hate level cap, man. I'm really not liking it anymore because I don't know if it's just because crossplay, but I'm constantly getting kicked out of matches and losing like several hours worth of work, which it, it just hurts, right? At least uh, uh, the new, I forget what the mission's called on uh, Zeraman, you can do it a little bit faster, but. <laughs> Uh, same issues where one fell swoop and you can lose all your progress. So, that has been the long and short of my Valkyr build. Uh, if you have any suggestions for the build, I would actually love to hear it, but the only way to let me know if you liked the build, if you didn't like the build, and even to let me know if you do have suggestions would be to uh, go outside to your car and start it up. If you don't have a car, you may need to call Uber. Go to like your local tractor supplier, what have you, and get a big bag of salt. Uh, you know, salt for the coming winter so that you make sure you don't slip on a staircase outside or something along those lines. Because lots of people get severe injuries from slipping on the front porch. So get on that post haste. Bye.